I would like to talk to you about business. The thing that everyone on Shark Tank thinks they have a great idea for, <laughs> even this guy. Our cakes are made of foam. Oh. And they're great. rentals. Oh. Wait. So I can neither have my cake nor eat it too? <laughs> I am in. Here is a million dollars. Small startup businesses like that hold a special place in America's heart, and politicians from across the political spectrum love to talk about how important they are. Small business is the backbone of the American economy. Small businesses are the backbone of this nation's economy. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Small businesses are the backbone of Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. It's true. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Is that rare thing that every politician agrees on. It's that, uh, support the troops, Ted Cruz can go fuck himself, <laughs> and South Dakota Senator John Thune can get it. He can get it. <laughs> now, look, it can feel like we're in a golden age of small business startups, but that isn't actually the case. The rate at which new businesses are being created has actually been steadily falling since the 1970s. And I would argue that one of the reasons for that is that big businesses have been getting even bigger, which brings us to our main topic tonight, corporate consolidation. Recent years have seen record highs for mergers and acquisitions, as you would know if you've ever watched the thrilled reactions they get on business news. M&A has been hot, continues to be hot. An exciting year for M&A. A few blockbuster deals being announced. They call it Merger Monday on Wall Street. It is shaping up to be another Merger Monday. They don't call it Merger Monday for nothing. Media mega Merger, merger Monday. Monday. Merger Monday? At last we have one, and I say... OK, that is obviously a little nauseating, but also <laughs> pressing a button on TV is a little bit dangerous because someone could take that footage and then loop any sound that they want <laughs> under there. Now, obviously, I am not immature enough to do that, but if I were, it would look like this. Merger Monday? At last we have one, and I say... <laughs> The point is, all this merger activity has helped make some sectors of our economy ridiculously consolidated. The United States has gone from having 10 large airlines back in 2000 to just four today. And those four mega airlines now dominate more than 80% of the US market. Yeah, we're down to just four major airline choices. And no, that does not include JetBlue, because that is not actually an airline. It's just a very expensive way to eat those weird blue chips, <laughs> which are, and this is true, just sliced Grover arms. <laughs> Look, and airlines here are just the beginning. Uh, the rental car business is now 90% dominated by just three companies. Uh, the US beer industry is 70% controlled by just two companies. And online search engines are, of course, as we all know, dominated by one major player. That's right, say it with me, Bing. <laughs> That's right, Bing, the best way to Google something. <laughs> In fact, look, Full disclosure here, even our own parent company, Time Warner, is currently trying to merge with AT&T, which makes this story a little dangerous for us to do. Although, you know, that is presuming that AT&T executives managed to get their shitty service working long enough to see it. <laughs> AT&T! It's the top telecom company around, alphabetically, and nothing else. <laughs> Even some brands that you might think of as indie now have multinational owners. Burt's Bees? It's, it's not run by a backwards bee fucker called Bert. <laughs> it's run by Clorox. Tom's of Maine, the deodorant which did so little to deodorise your freshman year roommate. <laughs> That's now owned by Colgate Palmolive. And then there is Goose Island. Now, their ads feature beardy brewers rubbing hops on their faces. <laughs> but what they don't mention is that Goose Island is owned by Anheuser-Busch. And that farm that you just saw is located at 822 Budweiser Loop. <laughs> It's presumably just past Bud Light's Lima Rita Boulevard. <laughs> Basically, if you see the mass grave of Clydesdale horses, turn left and you're there. <laughs> and it says something about the rapid rate of mergers that even Jim Cramer occasionally finds himself in disbelief at one happening. Watch him react to a mega merger in the aluminum can industry. Ball Corp's acquisition of Rexam is taking the number of competitors in this space down to get this from three to two. How did they let that happen? Yeah. 
It's not great when a business casual Louis C.K. with a sound effects board <laughs> is saying, holy shit, this was a really bad idea. <laughs> but, but how did they let that happen is actually a really good question. And the answer is interesting. Because we have had antitrust laws on the books for more than a century. And I'm not saying that every single merger is bad. You know, sometimes businesses getting bigger can lead to greater efficiencies and improvements. The tension is between allowing that and preventing them from doing real harm. So it's a, it's a balance. But since the late 1970s, that balance has tipped decidedly in favour of being merger-friendly, which has led to real problems. And let's start with the obvious. For workers, mergers can often mean big layoffs. But it's not just employees that can suffer, consumers can too. As Jim Cramer explained in that aluminum can segment in an inexplicably sarcastic tone of voice. I always say competition, while great for you, a consumer, is an anathema to profits. Sometimes a business will be a total monopoly with no competition whatsoever. And while that's the ideal, it's very rare to see a genuine monopoly because, of course, it's against the law. Which brings us to the next best thing, an oligopoly, where a handful of companies control an entire industry, coexisting peacefully without much in the way of price competition. That's a weird tone to use <laughs> to describe something that's clearly awful. It's rare to see genuine bestiality because, of course, it's against the law. Which brings us to the next best thing, having sex with a stuffed animal while <laughs> looking at pictures of a real horse. <laughs> and, and for a sense of what it can look like when a handful of companies coexist peacefully without much in the way of price competition, just look at airlines. In 2012, one airline executive told an industry conference, consolidation has allowed us to do things like ancillary revenues, which is jargon for all those fees that drive you fucking crazy. Now, American was the first major airline to charge you for your first checked bag back in 2008. And back then, people could not believe it. American Airlines will soon charge $15 for the first checked bag. That's on top of a fee of $25 for your second one. $15? Holy cow. I'll have to put my underwear in my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. First, that is clearly a delightful man. <laughs> Although, it does make you wonder whether he fills his bags full of underwear and nothing else. <laughs> but, but within months, most major airlines had followed Americans' lead, and it was essentially the industry standard. And it is easy for that to happen when there's only a handful of big players. In fact, since then, they've added and increased bag fees multiple times, often moving in tandem, which is how those fees have gone from generating around $540 million a year a decade ago to $4.2 billion now. <laughs> and that is infuriating. After all, if I wanted exorbitant fees that keep getting raised all the time despite shitty service, I'd become a customer of AT&T. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, AT&T. Even if you take over, you'll never be my real dad! <laughs> and, look, you, you may well be angry with the service you get from airlines, but thanks to consolidation, they don't really need to give a shit about what you think. And if you don't believe me, remember that awful video that went around earlier this year? The shocking images of a passenger caught in a travel nightmare. A man visibly shaken as he's yanked and then dragged off a United jet by law enforcement, all after refusing to give up his seat. Yeah, that is the most horrifying thing you can possibly see on an airplane, unless your in-flight movie is The Boss Baby. <laughs> a movie that combines the unbearable smugness of Alec Baldwin with the unbearable smugness of a baby. <laughs> Now, in the wake of that incident, people said it was a PR nightmare and there was talk on Twitter of boycotting United. The problem is, on certain routes, they're the only option. So a boycott is going to be pretty hard to pull off. And that is arguably why their CEO was later able to open his earnings call for that quarter by describing a period in which, I will remind you, a passenger had his teeth knocked out on one of United's planes like this. Welcome to a, a terrific second quarter, strong financial... Uh, results and even uh, more incredible operational results. And uh, as we think about customers, I want to thank them for their continued loyalty and support. Uh, we continue to find you and better ways to, to service them and make them more comfortable on our airline. And you know what? Is it really any wonder that their earnings stayed solid? United is sometimes the only way to get to where you are going, which actually explains their new slogan, you want a fucking rollerblade to Houston? <laughs> Shut up and get in! <laughs> And when an industry gets too consolidated, 
Any company trying to compete with them or survive in their supply chain can get crushed. Now, we all know about Amazon, Walmart or Google, but there are less obvious examples of this too. Take eyewear. Now, if you go into a lens crafters, you will see frames by brands like um, Prada, Dolce & Gabbana, Burberry and Ralph Lauren, all of which, it turns out, are made by an Italian company called Luxottica, which, incidentally, also owns lens crafters and Sunglass Hut and Pearl Vision and runs Target Optical and Sears Optical. So what can happen when a smaller company goes up against them? Well, just ask Oakley. Oakley was a big competitor and they had a fight with Luxottica and Luxottica basically said, we're dropping you from our stores. And Oakley... They refused to sell their glasses yeah, and their... it was a dispute about pricing and they dropped Oakley from the stores and the Oakley stock price collapsed. There were some issues between the two companies in uh, the beginning of the 2000s, but both of them understood that it was better to go along. We merged with Oakley in 2007. You bought so we're Oakley. Talking... They tried to compete and they lost and then you bought them. I understand your theory, but they understood that life was better together. Ooh. That is the menacing tone of a Bond villain. They understood life was better together, Mr. Bond, no? That is the first time that I have ever felt sorry for Oakley, the official sunglasses of guys who unironically use the term finger blasting. <laughs> and I think it's a sponsorship deal. And, and there is one more victim of consolidation that you may not think about, and that is the products themselves because heavily consolidated industries can lose the incentive to innovate. And the best example of this may be the cable box beneath your TV. If you have one of those, you probably hate it because it's huge, it's glitchy, and it may be one of the largest energy consuming items in your house, even when it's turned off. But if you think about it, Cable companies have no real incentive to improve them. They're essentially regional, regional monopolies. And again, they know that you basically have nowhere else to go. And you can't even smash your cable box out of frustration because you are renting it and they'll then charge you hundreds of dollars if you don't give it back. Which is why we went to the trouble of blowing this one up for you. Please take a look. There you go. Pretty cathartic to watch, right? I hope that helps. Feel free to watch it again in slow motion. I want you to know that box suffered. <laughs> the point here is, we seem to have forgotten how important antitrust is and are now all being forced to live with the consequences because this issue affects almost everything you do. Angry at banks? Well, the industry is dominated by just these four. Frustrated with your health insurance provider? Odds are it's one of these. And if this whole story is infuriating you so much that you are yearning for the sweet escape of death, well, bad luck, because the casket industry is controlled <laughs> by these three companies. <laughs> oh, and it gets even worse. The afterlife is actually controlled by one religion. I am not saying which one, but when you find out, you're going to be so mad. <laughs> the, the, point, the point is... The point is, we have laws to prevent the worst effects of consolidation, and it may well be time to more aggressively use them to impose stricter standards and to empower the FTC and the DOJ's antitrust divisions. And that is something that most people would really get behind, and nearly every politician should. After all, there is one thing they cannot stop saying. Small businesses are back on the well, if they really believe that, it may be time for them to stop talking about backbones and actually fucking grow one. And now, this. And now, all of Jim Cramer's sound buttons replaced with fart noises. Hedge funds that are in trouble start selling, not because they want to, but because they have to raise money to pay back their unhappy clients. Things keep working out. Is it any wonder that Norfolk Southern and Union Pacific keep running? <laughs> Buy high and then sell low. A time-honored way to lose money. Sell it tomorrow. Because the whole idea of saving for retirement puts you to sleep. But I want you to feel emboldened. Not as we tell you what we would do before we pull any trigger. 
I was wrong on both counts.